Hey there YouTube, this is JimBob82 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to determine if your paintball HPA or CO2 tank needs to be uh, rehydro tested. Now, before I get into what exactly to look for on your tank to determine if it needs to be hydro tested, um, I'm going to kind of go over why we hydro test tanks and paintball. And the main reason is just outright safety. Uh, everything has almost uh, a death date, if that makes sense, that everything will eventually go bad. And we're talking about small containers that hold enormous amounts of pressure. So in all safety and to keep everyone safe around you, you want to make sure that your tank is going to perform and not have a failure. So the main reason of doing this is to uh, rehydrate test your tanks in a yearly fashion. And the DOT has that already mapped out and already requires you to pretty much do that if you want to play at a certified field. So to begin with, all tanks should be recertified and Pretty much that's going to be standard if you want to use your tank at one of the big paintball events um, or any other field as most will not fill unhydro tested tanks. So we're just going to jump right into the main part of how to determine uh, to well when your tank is due for a hydro test. So mainly with the CO2, and we'll move these forward first, with your CO2 bottles, um, each one should be made of aluminum or steel. Now, m almost all will be aluminum, and around the crown, you will see some writing up here on each of the bottles. Now, on the writing, there's a lot of stuff that really doesn't mean that much, but there also is a lot that means a lot. So I'm going to push this one out of the way real quick, and we're going to use this one for our demonstration. Now, you're going to have your DOT, which is the Department of Transportation, and all bottles will have this on and you also have the one of the main things that you need to see on your tank. It's going to be the 3AL. That is a pretty much a little designation that your tank is aluminum and it is a five-year rehydro test. So that means every five years past the date of this tank being born is going to need to be rehydro tested. Now to figure out when this tank is born, you will also need to look around the crown and down here, normally on the second line, it will have um, normally a two digit and then it'll have some type of symbol sometimes that's actually an arrow and then it'll have the year so this one was born in the sixth month of 2013 so if I'm right that's June hopefully and then it also tells you how much that this holds so pretty much you add five years onto this last one right here so you're looking at 13 so this needs to be rehydro tested before 618 and not all bottles, but most new ones do have this. Down here, they do have the rehydro test before, and then it'll give you your date, 5-2018. So that's on a newer one, and here's an older one for comparison. Uh, this one does also have the markings at the top. Hold on, let me get around, okay. And there's the Department of Transportation, 3AL, and then this one was born in 2 of 06. So February of 2006, this tank was made. Now, obviously this one is out of hydro test date, and not that it should be can be this obvious on all tanks, but looking at the two, you can obviously tell which one is newer and which one is older. Even the brass at the top on the older one seems to be a little bit darker and a little bit more oxidized than the one on the newer one. Now granted, this isn't always a way to tell, because through heavy use, even new ones can look old. But sometimes looking at the regulator can sometimes also show a little bit of difference in age. So overall, CO2 tanks should always be rehydro tested. Yes, they do have your little extra pressure release valves up there, but in general, all tanks should be rehydro tested, even CO2, even if you don't think it's in bad condition. This is not just for the safety of yourself, but it's also for the safety of the others playing near you. Now, with CO2 out of the way, I'm gonna move on to our next one, which is HPA, and this is a uh, aluminum HPA tank, and this one also, all your information can also be found around the crown, just like on the CO2s, and this one also shows your DOT, 3AL, so Department of Transportation, then you got your aluminum, and then 3000 PSI, and then this also has the born date when this was made, and that is over here. Alright, so this was made in February of 2012. Now these ones also have a five year life to them, and that means that this one will not have to be rehydro tested until 2017. So it has quite a while to go yet before it needs to be rehydro tested. So 
pretty much CO2 tanks, aluminum CO2 tanks, and aluminum HPA tanks are about the same when it comes to rehydro testing and how to find the dates. Now, when it comes to carbon fiber 4500 air tanks, I do not have one of those on hand, so they're really they really are the same. They also normally all have a label on them. Actually, I'm pretty sure they're required to, but they have to have a label on them somewhat. Move this over. Have a label on it somewhat like this that tells you when it needs to be rehydro tested and when it was born. So that should be a pretty easy thing to find. And I also made up a paper because some are three-year hydro tests and some are five-year hydro tests. So I did make up a paper here that tells you just what numbers to look for and what it means. Most of them will outright tell you when, but here are the numbers on your label that you should look for if you want to determine how many years go by before a hydro test date. So up in the left we have the three-year hydro test date and up in the right we have a five-year hydro test date. Now most are three-year hydro test dates but there are some five. Now pretty much with those, those ones are normally need, required to be done sooner is because they are carbon fiber and yes they do uh, break much more easy and I'm, I'm not saying that they break all the time but through use and sometimes hitting off of trees, rocks, etc. They develop uh, dings and dents that normally compromise them, so they need to be looked at sometime sooner. Now on the bottom I also have a do not use. This was one tank that was actually a carbon fiber tank that was actually made and the DOT certified it, but then later decertified it. Um, that number is should be found on the label as it does still carry that but it should not be used because it does have some uh, compromising issues that the DOT did take away the, uh, the decertification for that. So overall that should be a quick way to determine what type of tank you have and when it should be rehydro tested. And just to uh, reiterate it you should always rehydro re test all tanks even CO2 tanks even if they don't look like they're in that bad of shape because like I said, most places will not fill your tank without it, and most fields won't let you play. And even if you think, oh, I'm just playing in my backyard, it should be all right. It still is not all right, and you should be looking out most definitely for your own safety as these, these tanks are held very close to you, but also for others because you are very close to each other. So with that safety tip, I'm going to sign off right now, and if you did like this video, please give me a like, and if you didn't, drop me a dislike, and as always, please subscribe.